Our next guest is a five-time Emmy-nominated and Golden Globe award-winning actress you know for her portrayal of Samantha Jones in Sex and the City. She produces and stars in the new show Filthy Rich, which airs Mondays on Fox. Let's take a look. You will give up this MMA thing. MMA? You are Jesus' only parent, and if you get hurt, who will you have? Besides, I would very much like for you to join my security team. She just put you on staff, bro. It is an entry-level position that you can build on. Jason, wherever he is, he will close that ganja factory. And Ginger. Here it comes. You and your mother, you will leave New Orleans, you will close that porn site of yours, and you will never, ever speak to any member of the press ever again. Please welcome to the show, Kim Cattrall. Thanks for being here, Kim. How are you? I'm great. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. And congratulations are in order. Uh, you are a, a new, a brand new U.S. citizen. I am, proudly. Um, August 17th, I became a citizen. Um, I took the test and passed. Uh, there were six, there were 10 questions and I got the first six right. So they said, okay, you can become a citizen. <laughs> uh, you really, uh, you joined us at a great time, Kim. You really, you really got yes. in while the getting's good. You need my vote. <laughs> That's true. Uh, welcome aboard, and uh, we're very happy to have you. Um, uh, before we get to your show, which I, uh, I, I'm looking forward to talking about, uh, we had a mutual friend. Uh, we've talked on this show about his sad passing um, due to uh, COVID. Uh, Hal Wilner, who was the music supervisor at SNL, but I did not realize you were close with Hal as well. Yeah, uh, I met Hal through um, Lou Reed. Uh, they were doing the radio show together, and, and we became you know, really close within that circle of friends. Uh, he was the, the first person that we lost to COVID. So it was really sad. Uh, my partner and I, Russ, we were in New York till about end of April. And then um, we got on a plane and went up to Vancouver Island where my mom is to make sure she would be okay. And I brought uh, this little uh, mini pod that Hal a few birthdays before had put over 2,000 songs of his music on for me. So um, I felt, you know, we were, we were all grieving Hal, but uh, every morning, every afternoon, I, I just had his music in, in the room, in the house. So uh, that was comforting. Uh, he, had, he was a man of so many skills, but that ability to curate oh, yeah. a musical list based on the taste of his friends was really, um, yeah. it, was, it was something else. Uh, yeah, he will definitely um, be missed. You, uh, you have a he wonderful will. new show. Uh, you play, uh, this is about a very rich family in the South who has a Christian TV network. And uh, we yeah. learned pretty early, a lot happens in the pilot that the patriarch of this family, your husband is maybe not living to the values that he espouses on television. Uh, That's right. are, you, are you enjoying the show so far? Oh my God, yes. It's great to play a woman, you know, who has that most feminine of qualities, uh, balls. <laughs> <laughs> so she's very ballsy. Uh, she's very stubborn. She's very controlling. And I, I really enjoyed, you know, I, I don't know that much about religion per se. I was never brought up with any religion. My mother was agnostic. My dad never really made it to church. So I wanted to sort of understand more about what it would be like to be an evangelical. Um, and I didn't want to do the Tammy Faye routine. I, I wanted to make her much more complex than that, which I, I hopefully think we had achieved. And I know you were a producer on this as well. Is it more interesting when you get to have a say in, in the character and, and make those choices from behind the scenes as well? Oh, it is. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a woman of a certain age, and I, I didn't want to dumb her down at all. And I, I love strong, powerful women. So uh, I wanted to oversee that. I wanted to have a say in that. I produced another show called Sensitive Skin, and that was my first producing uh, outing. And I, I just loved it. I, I really, really enjoyed the creative elements of it. Uh, I didn't have anything to do with the raising of the money or anything like that, which I don't think I'd be as good at. But um, what creatively, it was, uh, it was definitely uh, an avenue that I want to pursue further. I've heard you say that you were drawn to the character because it wasn't like anything you'd seen before. I have to imagine as an actor, it's so exciting when you're looking through a script and you have that realization that this is not a version of something you're familiar with. Absolutely, especially in your 60s. You know, I played my first grandmother role about a year and a half ago. And, uh, you know, I wanted very much to expound on that because 
as you know, you get older, you have so many more stories to tell. You have so much more to give as far as information, not just uh, about what yourself, but what that age, uh, you know, entitles you to and the challenges of it. Um, but for me, I, I love the camp element of Filthy Rich. You know, I, I love the fact that I could be that theatrical, um, but also be very subtle at the same time. This character was very broad, but very intricately drawn. So um, I read the script uh, that Tay Taylor, the executive producer and creator of it, sent me. And uh, the first question that I asked him was, uh, what happens next? Which is always a really good sign that there's, you're in new territory. Uh, you shoot this show in New Orleans, and I would say food is a really nice part of the show, especially the idea of like how food is a communal experience with family. And, yes. and I guess family is the only place left we're having communal food experiences. But when you were or shooting any it- any kind of communal <laughs> I know, right? And then at some point you realize, oh, there's a reason I went out with people that weren't my family. Um, did yeah, you- uh, exactly. You, uh, you started, uh, uh, obviously, it's a great city for food, and, and you pulled in a bunch of restaurants and, and chefs to be involved in the making of the show. Uh, were they uh, enthusiastic to be part of it? Oh, my God, yes. I mean, and there's, there's so much to the cuisine that I, I had no idea what a Humbert cake was. I'd never heard of a Humbert cake or any of those things. So I, I, I've been to New Orleans, but I never really experienced uh, – what it's really like to live there. We were, in the first season, we were there for about seven months all in total. And uh, it's, it's friendly, it's welcoming, it's crazy and zany, but it also has this little bit of danger to it. And I'm not just talking spices. <laughs> uh, lastly, I did not know this about you. This is a real uh, unknown fact for me, that you are a fan of the Premier League not only that, but you, I, a second congratulations in order. You're, uh, you support Liverpool, who uh, won the Premier League last year. Congratulations again. We are, the, we are the champions. Thank you. Now, I just have a question for you. How did West Ham happen? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a really good question. I was, this is a true story, that, though. You know? I was in, I was doing a show in London in, late, in the late 90s, and I wanted to see a Premier League game. And I went to a ticket agent, and it was that or Arsenal, and you could argue I made a terrible choice. <laughs> well, I think you made two terrible choices at that <laughs> night. <laughs> but I you think, it, I, think I deserve you. credit for sticking with my bad choice because I have You do. Yeah. You do. That, uh, that's commendable. You know, when, when you're born in Liverpool and both of your parents are Liverpudlian, you're either for Everton or you're a Red. And my dad was a Red, so you have no choice. You had no choice. I have a very similar thing with my father and, uh, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I will say this, West Ham is playing Everton on Wednesday, so maybe you could at least root for me then. Okay. <laughs> was, how dare you? Yeah, you know what? You're a bad winner. You're the champion and you should be nicer to people like me. <laughs> We've waited a long time. You, and it's well-deserved. Hey, thank you so much for being here. It's lovely to talk to you. Oh, pleasure. Thanks so much.